glad to talk to you today. I, I really love the film, so I appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thanks, man. Well, in the film, Orion is scared of everything. He can barely function. He's so scared. So I feel like there's no better place to start today than with the obvious question. What were, what were each of your biggest fears as a kid? For me, it was Chucky. I was really, really scared of Chucky. It's funny because I was so scared of Chucky, I found like my kindergarten journal and it was just filled with drawings of me like throwing Chucky into like a blender and like just like getting rid of that guy. Wow, that's a big power move because what that's yeah. communicating is that you are the one to fear, not Chucky, exactly. aka Brad Dourif. Right. I'm gonna flip the script there, yeah. Nice. Well it's done. kind of what Orion does. Uh, which is interesting. Yeah. I um I was afraid of uh another horror movie icon in uh Tim Curry's portrayal of Pennywise the Clown mm. in the T V uh movie T V series It <clears throat> that uh I just I saw like a three minute clip of it when I was like seven years old, eight years old, and it was way too young to see that and it, it messed me up for a, a good while. Yeah, wow. So did you guys go on a journey with Chucky and with Pennywise to sort of reconnect and realize there's not that much to be scared of, much like Orion does? I, I, you handled it better than I, I think. He's yeah, just gotta, you got to just, like, be the stronger one, you know what I mean? You got to, like, it's weird because when I was younger, I used to always, like, I know it's going to sound so weird, but I used to always, like, if I was f feeling freaked out in my room because, you know, you're hearing noises, whatever, I kind of, like, pretended that, like, I was the scary one, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, it sounds super weird to say. I've never said this before, but I was always like, I'm the monster, you know, you should be scared of me. And I would just like stare into the closet if it was open and just like, you know, it sounds really weird. No, but. it's actually, that sounds healthy. That's, <laughs> that it's really reminding me of like, it's reminding me of Brian Cranston in Breaking Bad when he's like, I am the one who knocks, I'm you know? <laughs> it's like, there's just such a... a I am the danger, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. Well, uh, as a dad, I really appreciated the the storytelling sequences between uh, adult Orion and his daughter, and how sometimes parents, you know, try to oversimplify stories for our kids. Paul, I, I know your 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 kids are pretty young. Have you had to wrestle with that, you know, simplicity versus honesty yet with them? Yeah, I kind of. I right now my kids are so young. You know, one of them's uh, about to turn three. One of them's about to turn one in April. And uh, and I, I kind of feel like keeping them as innocent and out of the loop of reality as long as possible. Uh, but then also when they come of age and they start asking questions, I do want to err on the side of being honest without going into um, detail because the Internet is where everybody gets all the details. And that's like a scary place to live. It's uh it's better to stay as pure and sort of um, at a distance for as long as possible before the world kind of takes hold of you. That's good. So not showing them Chucky or, or It. Uh, I even do you. that myself with my own like programming. Like I, There are shows I used to watch or music I used to listen to that I no longer do because I don't feel it's good for my uh, spirit or my head to have those lyrics in my head or to have those images in my in my tank you know that's really good. sometimes yeah. you just got to be growing up as a little kid i was told be careful little eyes what you see be careful little ears what you hear it's like a song or something and it's like you know i think that's true when you're an adult too you got to be careful that's good well i wish i had more time with you guys one last question before i let you go i i feel like there's there's a strong correlation between you know orion's fear of the dark and all the scary possibilities that 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 could hold and the life of an actor putting yourself out there into the unknown you know putting yourself out there for roles or making movies and not knowing how they'll turn out how do you how do you both manage the the unknown in the life of an actor jacob how about you man i mean that's a good question i feel like for me especially like at the start of production i always feel nervous because i'm like man am i gonna live up to these guys expectations you know mm -hmm. am I gonna be able to deliver but I think uh, I think for me just it's just about being comfortable and, and being confident and uh, being being genuine and also just like committing and not being afraid to 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 be or look silly you know what I mean yeah that's good um, yeah I think the scariest part of the unknown as an actor is not knowing when or what your next job is 
I think yeah. that's a little, a, a little tough. I think mentally, emotionally, especially when you have kids and you're providing for other mm -hmm. people, it becomes a different dynamic. But similar to what Jacob said, the best thing you can do is be authentic and and have some belief both in yourself and your surroundings, and and then just commit. You know, commit. And spend your time wisely. The worst thing you can do is, I think they say comparison. There's a phrase, comparison is the thief of joy. So uh, don't spend all day online looking at everybody's highlight reels and yeah. trying to compare your life to them. Go live your real life and, yeah. and spend your time in a healthy way until that next thing presents itself. Yeah, That's awesome. Well, guys, I appreciate your time. And really, I appreciated the movie. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, man. Sean and Peter. Thank you so much for the movie. I really, really loved it, truly. Uh, so I am excited to hear more about the movie. Awesome. Thank you. So let's start with the visual style of Orion in the Dark. It's, it's, the movie looks quite different than the book does. So where did you guys get started with kind of developing the, the look of the film, especially with Orion and Dark? Uh, yeah, I think so. Our brilliant production designer, Tim Lamb, you know, certainly took pieces from the book itself, from Emma's beautifully illustrated book, where there's, you see a lot of watercolors in there and a lot of kind of fantastical looking, the shapes of the stars even, we, we, we borrowed from her because they're so charming, you know. But then I think Tim mined from New Yorker magazines, from uh, Searle and other artists that are kind of these pencil um, you know, and, and 101 Dalmatians, if you go back and look at that, there's certainly some influence there where we started from. And then the trick was like carrying that through, saying, yes, we want that, and translating that into a CG world, um, which was difficult, but, you know, you find a way, and you're working with brilliant artists and technicians who help you do that. And so we feel that it, it was a pretty successful translation and really exciting to, to explore that. Absolutely. Yeah, I love the look of the film. I think it looks amazing. I think what you guys did with the characters was wonderful. Thank um, you. And Orion in the Dark is all about facing fears and exploring the unknown. And and filmmaking is full of the unknown. Uh, and so uh, for this film, you know, especially, Sean, it's your directorial, feature directorial debut. Peter, it's your first feature kind of leading out as a, as a producer. How did you guys manage the unknown with jumping on to Orion in the Dark? I mean... I think that for me, it was trusting trusting people that have done it before um, and staying positive and um, just kind of one foot in front of the other, I think is a really important um, attitude to have when you're making a movie. Because like you said, there's plenty of things that are not going exactly how you thought they would. And um, the only thing you can control is how you react to those moments. And I definitely... <laughs> Um, learned how to be better at that along the way. But I think having that attitude is is the way you get a movie done for sure. Yeah, we all had the same goal. We all kind of knew what this movie could be and should be. And um, getting there, you know, is never going to go to plan when you plan something that's going to take you two and a half years or more. You're going to have to find ways to go left and then go right, you know, to get back to where you need to go. And just being adaptable and open to that, I think, was was really important and what our crew had to kind of lean into. And we, we found out about ourselves that we were open for that challenge along the way. Yeah, everyone, all the leads, Peter, myself, um, other production people that were a huge help, um, th there was no quit in those people. No quit in me, no quit in Peter. We, there was no point where even for a day or two, we were like, we, we can't do this or I right. give up. And so I think that attitude as well made it made it work. Uh, well, before I let you go, you know, I loved the themes of, uh, you know, how we parents, sometimes we oversimplify stories and make them more palatable for our kids. Uh, I, I especially love Orion's daughter calling out one of my personal pet peeves in animated movies. The dance party. The dance parties. <laughs> or, the, or the marriage. Or the marriage yeah. and then a dance party. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. I, I love those moments. Uh, but so I, I wanted to know, as as filmmakers who, who work in animation, uh, how do you balance that that same theme of, of you know, making films that are kid friendly, uh, but that still, you know, don't don't pander or oversimplify in negative ways? How do you how do you balance that? Yeah, I think, you know, we didn't we didn't want to make a kids movie in the traditional sense. We wanted to make a movie for everybody and we hope kids certainly watch it obviously. And, and I, I expect they will. And, 
Um, hopefully they take something from it. But when you're trying to specifically make a film for kids, you're going to miss the mark on a lot of things that kids then can ultimately grow and relate to. So I think it was important for us to kind of age it up a little bit, you know, for lack of a better term. Um, and I feel like we did that. And yeah, and like, you know, Kaufman is going to already bring that energy of, of doing what he as an artist feels is is good and right and he's always going to bring that energy and I think we I definitely felt that in the script and we just wanted to, to not water down you know Kaufman writing we want it to be you know we want to keep that just as just as beautiful as it is and um, I think we made that really important as we moved through all the all the doors and hoops and things that we we kept it feeling like the script absolutely well i appreciate it so much again i love the film so thank you so much for your time thank you thank man. you